Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the phosphagen system and how it resynthesizes ATP. So when I say phosphagen system, what am I referring to? This refers to pathways that directly transfer phosphates uh, back onto, not ATP, sorry, but ADP. And when they put the phosphate on, now the ADP becomes a TP. So it, these usually take a single step and happen very rapidly. We have two main enzymes or pathways uh, that account for this in, in human skeletal muscle. First is the adenylate kinase pathway, and calling it as a, pa a pathway is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration because it's one step, and that's why we can call it just by the name of the enzyme, adenylate kinase. The second one is the creatine kinase pathway, and again, this happens with one main enzyme. So it's a very simple step. And uh, based off of the name, the phosphagen system, all we're doing in both of these is we're going to take a phosphate off of another group. Uh, so whatever the molecule is here, and I'll tell you about them, that one will be creatine, one will be adenosine diphosphate. We're going to take the phosphate off of it and put it onto an existing ADP to form ATP. So that's the general idea of how this phosphagen system works. So what is the adenylate kinase system? So you have this enzyme adenylate kinase, and it's floating around in the skeletal muscle and in a lot of cells. So when you exercise, uh, your muscle is going to utilize ATP. One of the main ways that it utilizes it is through the crossbridge cycling. So you can use that ATP to power your crossbridge cycling and, that, and do your contraction. That's going to leave you with adenosine diphosphate and an inorganic phosphate. And it would be nice if you could just shove that phosphate right back on to the ADP to form ATP, but uh, that would put, that goes against energy gradients. And so that doesn't happen naturally. So we have to somehow get something to transfer it over. So what we do with the adenylate kinase enzyme is this ADP that we've formed hooks up with another ADP that's been floating around, probably because it was a broken down ATP. And we're gonna take a phosphate off of one and put it onto the other. So the consequence of that is the adenylate kinase just transfers over the phosphate group to one ADP to form an ATP. And now that ATP can go back through uh, the crossbred cycling or whatever process is using the ATP. Uh, in addition to the ATP, it also leaves us with something called AMP, adenosine monophosphate. Instead of having three phosphates or two phosphates, this is an adenosine molecule that's hooked up with one phosphate. And so it's at a low energy state. We've gotten pretty much all the energy out of that ATP that we can, and now it's just this AMP that it doesn't do us much good in terms of energy production, but it can be used and is used a lot for signaling. This AMP molecule will be used to uh, elicit a lot of the adaptations for endurance training, and also it's a major signal for the cell during exercise to initiate things like insulin-independent glucose transport. So this adenylate kinase molecule is really good at getting you an ATP fast, but the problem is that it's limited by how much ATP you have. And as we've talked about in the past, you only have a little bit of ATP floating around in the body. So once you've converted all your ATP to ADP, uh, you can quickly get go through this, this store really quickly. So it doesn't have, it can't last very long, but it is very fast. Now, another system that we have is the creatine kinase system. And this creatine kinase system is going to work very similarly to the adenylate kinase system. It's going to transfer a phosphate off of one molecule onto an ADP to create ATP. But the enzyme here is different. This enzyme is creatine kinase, and you're gonna take that ADP that you form through muscle contraction or from whatever, and it's gonna meet up at the creatine kinase enzyme with an enzyme called phosphocreatine. Sometimes I'll write this just and other people will write it as phosphocreatine like this. Sometimes it's creatine phosphate. Sometimes in the book or in literature you read, you might see it as CP, hopefully not CP. That's kind of a confusing one that for reasons that will become apparent later, uh, or PC. So really, anytime you see an energy system, something referring to an energy system with a P and a C in it, that's it's probably going to phosphocreatine. All right, so this, this enzyme, phosphocreatine, 
or sorry, it's not an enzyme, it's a molecule. This molecule phosphocreatine has this phosphate onto it, and we're just going to transfer it over to the ADP to now get ATP. So now we have an adenosine triphosphate that can go through and be utilized again. And that leaves us with a creatine molecule that doesn't have a phosphagen or a phosphate uh, on there. And, and so this is a low in a low energy state now, and it's it's almost worthless in terms of energy production. I can't take this creatine and break it down further to get ATP. If I'm going to use this creatine again, I need to take it to the mitochondria where it will use ATP in the mitochondria to come back and get phosphorylated and get a phosphate on there to become phosphocreatine again. So, this system, just like adenylate kinase, is limited by how much uh, phosphocreatine you have stored in the cell that you're interested in. And in our case, most of the time, we'll talk about skeletal muscle. And your, your skeletal muscle cells don't store a ton of phosphocreatine. It's probably enough to, to last you for 30 seconds of maximum intensity sprinting. Uh, so you can exhaust it really quickly. So this is one of the reasons why you don't have a why we don't rely on this exclusively, even though it allows for really high resynthesis rates and really high power outputs for exercise, uh, it gets exhausted really quickly. Another issue with the phosphocreatine and the adenylate kinase system is that they, uh, they create a lot of uh, basically pollution for the muscle. It causes some unfavorable uh, conditions for the muscle that will cause peripheral fatigue. So we, we can't rely on these all that much. All right, so that's all we'll talk about right now for how the systems work. In a later video, we'll talk about how you can recharge the creatine kinase, uh, the creatine kinase system to get this creatine back to phosphocreatine. And I've already hinted at it.